Okay, today supporting printers. When you install a printer at home, not a big deal, right? You plug it in, put the driver in, whatever the instructions say. The, each of them is a little bit different. Uh, I remember the last time I put in an HP printer, it said that I should plug in the printer, turn it off, start the driver software, and then eventually it says, turn the printer on now so I can detect which one it is to put the driver in. And that's pretty much how we'll install it as a local printer. But again, we're, we're thinking a little bit bigger than a single printer on a single computer at home. And you may or may not share your printers at home uh, so that you can have it on. And I know most of you are probably running the network, so you can have it on multiple machines. What we're talk, going to talk about here is how to install maybe a network attached printer. I call it a network attached printer. They call it a network printer. And I'll give you my opinion of what's different about them, how to manage what goes on in a printer, who can use it when. We're talking a bit, little bit, same thing, just a little bit larger scale. And most of this stuff, hopefully you see as we go through it, is not really a matter of what you can and can't do. It's just a matter of scale, what we do. The objectives, learn about printer types and features. Printer types, we're going to have uh, lasers and ink jets and impact printers. <coughs> and ink block printers, which are kind of neat, except they have to warm up for a long time. But they make color, or have in the past made color simpler. Have you ever looked at a color laser printer? I mean, it's, it's, it, 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 I swear to Rube Goldberg built it, because you've got all of the different uh, uh, modules that go into it for the different colors, and it goes on and on and on to warm up. So it makes it a little bit simpler when we do those things. How to install printers and share a printer and how to manage printer features, add-on devices, and the print queue. And this is the one I kind of want to go through. And when you do your Windows classes, we'll go through it again. When you do your uh, Windows 7 class, we'll do it again. When you do your uh, server class, we'll do it again. When you do your infrastructure class, we'll do it again. Managing printers is a pretty big deal. Who can and can't print where? Who has priorities, and that's what we're really talking about here. And when we talk about installing printers, we're talking about installing printers on a <coughs> Windows machine. So we'll take a look at that, and I'm going to go through a demo and, and go through and actually look at the properties on a printer as to what we're talking about, how to manage. It's not, it's not anything that's really all that complex. It's just that you may not have ever looked at those things before, what kind of restrictions you can and can't have with them. Routine maintenance tasks necessary to support printers. That's basically cleaning them, keeping the tracks clean. Laser printers uh, have very tight tolerances on the paper pads. And you also have to use the correct kind of paper. If it's too thin or too thick, it's going to cause an issue. If it's too thin, it may wrap around the drum. If it's too thick, it may not go through. Uh, you may try to pick up mul multiple sheets of paper, those things about that. Learn how to troubleshoot printer problems. They're one of those things that are kind of work or don't work, really. What you can have is the print device itself, the thing that you go to the store and buy could have an issue, and those usually have a self-test that you can check them. Could be the cable, whatever kind of cable that you're using, or if you're using a wireless or radio transmission interference or things like that, or it could be the driver, and that's about it. And what you've got to do is just go through the step-by-step -step process to test each of those items. Configure, repair, and maintain uh, requires knowledge of printer types and features of printer types. What kind do we need? Well, most people, most businesses now at least, have gone to lasers and they need multiple copies. They just simply print them. But in a large scale thing, if you get invoices, for instance, you'll probably get a carbon. A lot of times I get a carbon copy for things that come in. That means that they're Instead of printing the multiple, because if you get large numbers of documents and you get a lot of different sheets that are spread out all over creation, there's a chance of mixing them up. If you do the carbon, you take the one sheet and it stays with that item down the line. You rip the carbon off, put it in for the shipping, and then the, the original goes to whoever puts it into the computer or whatever else they do with those things to maintain their records. How our printer works helps in fixing the printer problems. Uh, inkjet printers don't print. Could be that the little nozzles, the holes are stopped up. Could just be that the head's bad. The thing that happens a lot today, when, even in lasers, 
and in inkjets when you replace the uh, toner module and the laser and when you replace the ink cartridge in the inkjet, you're really mostly replacing all of the print function of the, uh, of the device itself. The printer languages communicate between the operating system and, and the printer. Printers use PostScript, and PostScript is something that you may or may not see these things use. I see that my that I have I, I forgot to turn my pen back on, didn't I? But PostScript really started out. PostScript commands really started out as an Apple, and it has to be supported. A couple of way back when things that you would see is that somebody would print a postscript, a printer that does both PostScript and PCL at the time, printer control language, which is what Windows used for a long time, and that's what a lot of the drivers you'll see. Print both. Somebody prints a PostScript document, and then somebody comes behind them and prints a PCL, and it doesn't print right. How do you fix that? Well, in that case, what's happened is the PostScript Information is stuck in memory, hung in memory. We didn't get flush from memory or whatever else happened, and that does happen in all these things. So the PCL job won't print. A lot of printer problems, not all. We had one one time somebody said, oh, it didn't work. A lot of printer problems can be, turned, can be fixed simply by turning it off and letting the memory drain down. They do have memory, just like a computer has memory. The documents go in memory, get held in memory typically, and then get printed. Uh, one of the things that can cause you an issue with printing documents don't print completely, may not have enough memory. And those are things that you can check. So PCL, <clears throat> to build a page, is a printer control language. Windows GDI graphics device interface builds a page and then sends it to the printer. And when it says builds the page, it may build the page, and we typically want it to build most of the page on the workstation. When we use it and so sends it to the printer, may build a page and send it to the print server. So the GDI, Windows 7 and Vista uses the XML paper specification. It's a new one. It's just what it uses. The process stays the same. If you see the processes side by side, the PCL and the XML process uh, tend to be basically the same. In RAW, when we really don't have anything, a text document, you could print RAW. And that's one of the ways that you can test a print or a print device is to print or the print the drivers is to print a document directly to the print device that doesn't require a driver. Types of printers, the majors are laser ink jet, thermal and impact printers. Thermal printers are the ones that we see you know, at, the, at the gas station when you get your receipt that's going to be on thermal paper. And the issue with thermal paper, thermal receipts, those things are they do fade away. So if you buy something, have something that you need to keep the receipt and it's a thermal, you may want to make a copy of it so that it, you have it. You're, it's legible when you need to, to, to see it. Laser. Very popular inkjet, home use typically, ink dispersion, and these are kind of neat. What they really do is boil the ink, and it boils it out of the, out of the nozzles of them. Electrographic printer, mechanical, electrical, and optical technologies. Uh, CompTIA really kind of sort of wants you to know about the laser printer process, which we'll look at here. They'll have a slide here in a second. And on your uh, Moodle page is a picture of it also, but that's one that, people kind of have a lot of questions about. The laser printer works. The toners uh, place electric, uh, on electrically rotating drum. The toner deposits on the paper. Moving at drum speed, what I really want to get to is my picture here, the seven steps. The seven steps, processing, conditioning, developing, transferring, fusing, cleaning. When we were in here the other day, uh, he said that he had a question about laser printer. Said that the toner fell off the page, right? You know what he said? Toner fell off the page means that the fuser is not working. The heat and pressure of the actually melts the letters onto the paper. You also may be seeing see things that the letters pop off. You never you ever seen a duck <laughs> and it happens. I've seen like one, but the letters pop off of the page it means it's the wrong kind of paper. The paper's too smooth and it's not adhering properly to it. 
when you get into laser printers, you really need to use the correct paper with these things, the correct white thickness of it, as well as the, and we'll get into brightness and pounds and those things, and that's what we do. So processing the image, the image of the final page when when we send the stuff from the machine to our printer, processing the image is a bitmap of the page is stored in memory conditioning the drum surface is charged to minus 600 degrees when we are 600 degrees minus 600 volts minus 600 degrees would be really cold but minus 600 volts so that tells you that you really don't want to be just casual about working on a printer and when it writes the laser beam writes to minus 100 volts which means that the area that the toner is going to go on where the letters are is less highly charged, less negatively charged than the rest of the drum. Uh, the toner is then applied to the minus 100 volt areas, sucked onto it because of the charge, and then the toner is drawn off the paper, off of the drum onto the paper. This is kind of like a huh mechanical process, but this is the way that they still work. And then it's fused, it's melted on, and then we clean the drum. Uh, the color laser printer, same thing, but it happens four times. Color lasers tend to be pretty expensive printing, and you're going to have four different toner cartridges, one one for each of the colors that it uses. Parts used to develop cleaning steps undergo the most wear. These things do have, can have issues with wearing parts out. Also, toner tends to get into a lot of parts of the printer. You really don't want to blow it out with air because you don't want the toner all over everything else. What you don't want to do when you get toner on your hands is use hot water because, remember, heat's what's used to make it adhere. So you want to use cold water, brush it off, probably wear a smock or something, because this stuff is nasty if you've, if you've never worked with toner. We can go up and look at this one in the front. There will always be some toner lying around in one. You can see how fine a particle it is in order to do those things. Toner cartridges frequently need to be replaced, followed by the drum image, fusing cartridge, and transfer assembly, each of these things. But toner cartridges typically need to be replaced on a very regular basis. Other parts... Pickup roller separation pay, pad, uh, and the separation pad keeps more than one. Uh, focuses focuses it forces it to only uh, take one sheet of paper at a time. To print both sides is a duplex printer, double side printing, and that's what you really want to do. And I think that that's what they've tried to force here is that we use double side printing for everything. Okay, the process here, and then down to the bottom, you can go to the sites. We've got cleaning, conditioning, writing, developing, transferring, and fusing. So what we have is, <clears throat> comes in on the mirror, the laser writer, we're going to come in, and it will uh, write onto the drum. Okay, let's try it again. Let's see if we can get to, see if I can get through the process, maybe. The laser writing... Still not going to write yet. Well, right form it comes in. There's a mirror here. The writing comes in and it reflects it onto the drum. So the letters go onto the drum. As the drum goes around, the toner in here, which has a positive charge, remember this, does it to a minus 600 volt. It's charged over here with the primary corona. Right here is where the initial charging takes place. And it goes over here. When we write here, we go to a minus 100 volts, and we have toner that is, is positively charged. Where we have a lower voltage, the toner gets pulled onto the drum. I said my, this is going to be going to have a charge on it. I won't say positive because the positive goes to the more negative. Uh, it's got a charge on it that goes to the area of lower charge where it's been written. 
as it continues to go around in, in the developing roller, we do have a, here's where a positive charge comes in, we have a positive charge down here that sucks as the paper goes across here, goes across here, it will suck the toner from the letters onto the paper. And as it continues to go, this goes through the fuser, which will heat and press the letters onto the paper. And then it comes out nice and warm and fresh. But a couple of things that can happen to you if the if the drum as it goes on yeah yeah as it goes on around a photosensitive drum, then we have a cleaning blade which actually takes the excess toner off. And there's an excess toner. Uh, cartridge that takes it, it has to be emptied occasionally from the toner that didn't get pulled off, that gets wiped off this thing. And then we go back through the whole process again. So we have that in the laser printing process that allows us to, to do that, make it work. Okay, back to the inkjet. The inkjet printer has been around a long time. And what really happened on here, HP won this one. They beat the Japanese because what they did was copyright by basically every process in there, how it's heated, how the ink pass go, and those sorts of things. Uses a type of dispersion printing. Dispersion means, and it's not high quality, dispersion means that it's basically just boiled out or shot out of the, well, kind of like a hose except it's real close. On, from the uh, printhead onto the paper itself. Not high quality. The printhead moves across the paper and it does one line of text is created with each pass as it goes as it goes across it. Ink is applied using a matrix of small dots similar to a dot matrix and if you look at the end of these things they're just little holes in the bottom of it. And plates with a magnetic charge direct the path to the paper. Different kinds of ink jets form it in a different way. The most popular now is the bubble jet. The bubble jet actually uses heat and it boils the ink out of the uh, out of the head. Uh, we used to have some electronic ones which changed the shape of the devices and forced it out. But most of them are going to use the uh, the heat process now. Slower images smudge on any expensive paper. And if it gets wet, you ever get a, an ink jet document wet and it runs all over the place and you want to use paper design for the inkjet printers if you if you they used to make some pretty cheap recycled paper which was very porous and if you really wanted to see a messy document use an inkjet on it because it would run in all of the different little pores of it and it would be a, a terrible looking one so you do need to use the proper paper with these things uses two or four separate cartridges and this is one that you really need to do pay attention to it uses two or four cartridges uh, the two cartridges are going to have a actually some of them use one which you really don't want and then it mixes the inks to kind of make a gray black but that's pretty expensive black ink if you're using all your color cartridge for that two cartridges you'll have a black cartridge and a color cartridge and all in one the four Four separate cartridges of color, and then and then in the four the colors to mix, to make the colors. And the advantage to the four is you don't have to replace all of them at once. Uh, there are refill kits. There are locations that will refill them. Impact printers, uh, the best known is the dot matrix. Problem with them, they are very noisy the printhead moves across the paper you can have a line at a time these things these things are doc are a letter at a time a line at a time they have line printers and then there are page printers that for high production sort of arrangements the pins shoot against a, a cloth ribbon and the uh, the ribbon impacts the paper and deposits the ink so it has it has a ribbon that goes back and forth can be typically used multiple times and may be able to re-ink the ribbon. It uses tractor feed paper. The advantage here is that it just keeps, you can put a box of paper in and it, and it feeds the paper and it can be multi-part papers. Carbons, they, they are durable. They last a long time. They get hot and I think this says caution hot surface here. They do get hot. They will burn you if, if you are 
get onto it at the wrong time. Keep the printer in a cool, well ventilated space. Don't print over 50 to 75 pages without a cool down cycle for them because the heads will get very hot. Thermal printers use heat to create the image, and we have to have special paper for this thing. So you have to have thermal paper, it burns the dots onto it. Use for receipts, it's the things that actually lots of cash registers, I guess, use use the thermal printers. The pumps at the gas station use the thermal printers. Uh, contains a wax-based ink. The heating element mac melts the ribbon onto the thermal paper, and it uses used to print barcodes, receipts, clothing labels, and that reliable, easy to maintain, but they do degrade over time when exposed to light. Those are ones, again, if you need receipts, you need to keep them. Windows install, and this is where kind of some of the stuff that I'll always agree with them. Local printers attached to the uh, PC using a port or wireless connection. And I say also you can, you can do it using an IP address. A network printer has an Ethernet port to connect directly to Wi-Fi using an access. To me, a network printer is something that we can control access to. So anything that's out there that you can connect to directly and manage directly is a local printer. Anything that's on a print server and all the print server does in a print process, the print server just says, this is the next print job. When you install a local printer, that machine becomes a print server. So the network printer has, a, has an Ethernet port to connect directly or uses a Wi-Fi to connect. To, to me, this network this would be a network attached printer, not a network printer. OS compatible is required, uses a 32 or 64 bit driver, and Windows 7 has a lot of stuff built in. When we'll look at the process I want to go through instead of doing their slides here in just a second, I want to go through the install process and the management process for the printers themselves. Uh, this one it shows a network printer. A network printer, again, has got to have a print server someplace, something to control it, control access to it. Because you guys can install network printers here. You can install it through Active Directory, but you can't install local printers because you don't have permission. Typically, you're going to have to be an administrator to install. On your virtual machines, you should be able to do it, and that's one of your activities is to install a printer. So we'll look at it. I'll go through the process of how to do that. They show a local printer here is directly attached. I think that if you attach this thing the way we're going to, it's going to be a locally attached printer. <clears throat> Each of these things, if everybody can connect to the, themselves and add it, it's going to be a local printer because you manage the printer. A network printer, the network administrator manages the printer. Installing a local printer, la da 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 da, -da. install a local printer, the USB, basically we plug it in and it tells us, hey, Plug it in, Windows 7 installs the printer automatically, launch the installation program, put the drivers in. So the last, the last USB I did said, plug it into the computer and turn the, pr turn the printer off. Now put the software in, let the driver go, and the driver went on, and it took forever to get it installed. But the driver software eventually said, okay, turn the printer on now, and then that's when it actually put the rest of the software in. I think it's because it puts all their supporting softwares on them. <clears throat> A non-USB or a network printer uses Windows 7. Uh, verify the printer's on and available. And one of the issues that I'm going to have this morning is a printer we usually use, and I'm trying to find an alternative, is down. It's not actually in the system right now. Could click devices, and, and this is what this is the process that I want to actually go through the installing. Add a printer, those things. XP is basically the same process with XP as Windows 7. And hopefully when you get there, you're not going to see a lot of XPs anymore. The XP uh, support's been discontinued. That doesn't mean that they won't work. It means that Microsoft's not going to send any updates. The thing that we, I see now on television is, hey, our antivirus supports Windows XP. Well, all the antiviruses are going to continue to support Windows XP. What Microsoft's not doing is, doing updates to XP anymore. Printer installation using a parallel port, parallel serial ports. Uh, serial and parallel ports are not hot pluggable, meaning we can't change them. USB is hot pluggable. We can 
plug it in and unplug it while the system's running. The parallel and serial ports are not that way. You need to put it on, shut the machine down, start the machine so that it will activate those ports. Uh, the general process, print a test page, and we'll, I'll, these again are the things that I want to go through. I'm going to get through, just click through the steps. Hopefully we're going to see those things as we go through installing a shared printer, managing the print queue. We'll look at those things, printer maintenance and upgrades. So let's stop the presentation right here, and what I want to do is go to a virtual machine and do some installations so you can see that process for the you probably already done again the home ones you probably done but the network ones you may or may not have done this may be a little odd I will go I'll go through the process the printer itself will go through a local one we can light our windows and tell if there's something there when it's really not and then the networked printers so if I want to Add a printer, go to control panel, and then the control panel will go to devices and printers, right? A, B, device manager. Okay, we'll go to printers. Yeah, it's different ones of different things. Windows by default, you'll notice that there there is no printer installed on this thing. Windows by default puts in this Windows XPS document, which if you don't have a printer, you can actually save to uh, an XPS document. You can print it to it and, and take it. So what I'm going to do is add a printer. We have a choice between add a local printer or add a network printer. Let's do the local printer first. Where are we going to put it to? LPT1, the parallel port, or the serial ports will allow us to do those things. And then down here I have a TCP port. Uh, that's the one that we'll try to do a little bit later that I'm not sure will work. With this one we'll just use an existing port. Or you can create a port, a local port, or a TCP IP port. So we're going to use an existing port. Next, uh, let's see if it will find us an actual real list of devices here. When we do these things, we can... Pick our pick our poison basically, and I'm going to do this one. The Rico 1013 PCL. Remember the driver, the PCL. PCL is one of the drivers. This is, uses a PCL driver, and it says set it as the default printer. It's the first one, so we'll do that. And then install the printer. Windows should find, hopefully within Windows itself, the driver for this thing. And you notice that it didn't check to be sure that something was actually attached because there isn't anything that's actually attached. We can share it or not share it. Look at the sharing here just a second. We'll, we'll say that it will share it as our demo printer location is uh, cloud. And we'll say not real because it's not a real printer. And next, we'll share it in as it goes through, install it. We could print a test page. Wouldn't do me a whole lot of good because there's nothing to go. What you do to print a test page, it'll say, did it work? And you can say yes or no. I don't, I don't want to do the test page right now. We'll just finish this thing. When we go to it, Let's look at the things that we can do. It is now a shared computer, which to me means it's now a networked printer because I can allow or control different aspects of it. And if I go to the printing preferences of this thing, we have portrait, page order, front to back, back to front, how are we going to do it, sheet pages per sheet, and the, the printer quality is automatically selected, plain paper, those sorts of things. If I then go in here and look at the properties of the printer, these are where we can actually do some of the management of who can use it when. Sharing, it's already shared as demo. Ports, it's connected to my mythical LPT1 on this one. We can change things around. 
Notice that as I click around here, I can only have it connected to one port at a time. If I had two of these printers and something that was particularly busy, I can do something here called enable printer pooling, where I can now have more than one port connected to it at a time. And what that does is it sends the job to whichever one is available. That has its advantages and disadvantages. We did that one time. And uh, we used to have a big lab where people did office and things like that. And we had two printers, print devices side by side that were pooled, and people would stand and look at one waiting for the job to come out when it was laying in the tray of the other one. I've always thought that this would be a great job for your health program for your company. Just spread the printers out all over the building, and then you have to go from location to location to find your print job because it will not put it necessarily on an individual printer. It won't put it on an individual printer. You can't pick which one it's going to go to. The print server, this thing, which is now since it's installed locally as a print server, will do that. But you can have that only if you do enable printer pooling. They have to use the same driver, so they have to be the same printer type when we do those things. When we go into advanced, here's where most of the management is in this one we can have it always available and that's the default or available from if we don't want it to be available 24 hours a day seven days a week we don't want it to for some reason to have print jobs coming out in the middle of the night for whatever reason that, that they might be there priority one is the default priority and that is the lowest priority priorities go from one to 99 99 being the highest priority. And then we have the driver here that we can use for it. This is something that you really don't want your users fooling around with because it can really make a mess. If you've ever seen a document or somebody print something that comes out and you get like one character per page and you get a couple hundred pages, it seems like coming out, that's typically going to be a driver mismatch when you do those things. And you can prevent that down here by clicking on the whole mismatch jobs. I don't know why that's not a default, but that is if we have a driver mismatch. When we're going to start, it says start print documents. So to start or spool print documents, spool it means it's going to save it onto the machine in, in, a, in a document uh, series of documents. And then it says start printing immediately. To me, I would start printing after the last page is spooled. The reason is we've had instances where people were printing a document from the Internet and it tries to spool it and you lose connectivity. Not as bad now as it used to be. But if you lose that connectivity while in the middle of a print job, it just stops and everything stops until you make that job go away. So you can do those things if you want to. If you need to keep the printed documents, you can keep them. By default, when a document's printed, it's file is deleted. If you need to keep those files, you have to check that. If you do that, be sure that you move them out of your uh, spool area, out of your, printer's, uh, or your printer spool to someplace else because they will build up relatively quickly when you do those things. Uh, the device settings are going to be specific to the printer itself whatever is available, the number of trays, external fonts, installable options, whatever is available there. The ports, again, where we actually physically connect, the, connect it to. Color management, again, will be a function of what's on the device itself. And this one, all profiles, this one really doesn't have any color, so we're not doing any color management. Security. Who can use the printer? The default is everyone can print. So when we do that, our default, anybody can print to a printer. Printer. You can manage that with groups. That's more of, of what we learn about in the Windows class is how to manage it using groups. Who can print when we can manage those things. But that's a basic how you install a local printer. If we wanted to, okay, let me try to uh, do this network printer here 
on my virtual machine. So I'll go to the Add Printer, and I can add a local printer or add it as a network or wireless. Let's, let's first go through Add as a local printer. And I can create a new port, a TCP IP port, and I'll put the IP address in 10.60.61.16, I believe. And I'll tell it to auto-detect. We could do that or tell it to TCP IP device. We already know it's a TCP IP device. So I guess we might as well do that. Wait for it to find a list of print drivers, and we'll go down here. It's a, it, it didn't actually say, oh, yeah, this, this is the particular one. Communicate with the printer. I know that it's a RICO. Rico and 2075. Let's see if we can go down here and find the correct driver here. Maybe, maybe not. 20. I guess I should go faster. 2075 PCL6. When we do this thing, we'll call it a front device. And we'll set it as the default printer. It should install the printer itself and uh, go around. This to me is installing it as a local printer as you saw. We're going to say, we'll call it front desk, front desk for class purposes only, only around that and share, we're going to share it as front next. And I should be able to print a test page. This one actually should. It says a test page has been sh been sent. If it cl does correctly, we'll just close it. Otherwise, it goes through the process again. The other way we could do that, add a printer, wireless or network. I'm going to stop this because it's not going to find anything. There's nothing available. It wasn't there. Then I could add it using a TCP IP or host name, and it goes through the same process as I just did, so there's no need in redoing that one. If we were on a uh, Microsoft or Windows network and we add these things, and we'll stop, and it wasn't here, one of the things that I should be able to do, and since I'm not in a domain, it doesn't give me that option. I'll go back to the uh, to the desktop here, and if I add a printer, and we're going to add a network printer, I'll stop and it wasn't listed. I have an other option here: says find a printer in the directory next, and I'm going to pause it and let it go through and let you and let you see what it actually does find. So this thing has now gone around and looked in Active Directory. This is a relatively large one here, ECPIVAB. We go down and down and down, and I've already been to Roanoke once. I can click on Roanoke, find out, it will show me the printers that are available there. If I wanted to look at the entire directory, find now, it shows me all of the printers that are installed in the entire Active Directory doesn't necessarily mean that if I install it, I'll be able to print to it because I may or may not have permissions to any of those. And anything outside of this domain, this this location, I shouldn't have access to. But that's the way that you would, in fact, do that. So let's go down here on one that I may actually have a chance at doing, and we'll look in Roanoke. And let's look in the registrar, see if we can just bug the heck out of the registrar. Okay, and then it's looking for the driver. The drivers are actually stored on the server itself and should be automatically downloaded. And it says that it found the driver. Register our office on this one and finish. You can print a test page. Don't want to because I would just be bugging him. And, it, and you can see by the check mark, it made it my default printer, which I really don't want it to be. So I'll go back and set my other one back as the default printer. But that's the way you would install a printer, network printer that's managed through Active Directory. The other way to install a network printer, and I'm back on my desktop, I have to flip back and forth where there are and aren't shares. We could add a local printer, and I already know that it's not going to be there. I'm just going to stop here and say it wasn't listed. I can go to, and it will then show me a list of shares. This is the server that they're shared on in a backslash. Back Let's do the front desk here. 
next, and it's going to be looking for the driver again, which again, it may or may not find the correct driver as we do these things. I'm going to pause the video while it continues to look for the driver. Okay, it was just not maybe a minute or so later. It found it. It says that you've successfully installed its printer names of front desk, HP Laser Jet 4, Jet 4 SI. It communicated with the printer, asked it what it was, and it told it what it was, and it went and found the correct printer for that. I'm not going to set it as the default. I'm not going to set it, I'm not going to do a test page. I just wanted to go through the process of how to install it. So it's now here, front desk, and if we look at these things, the printer properties. The printer properties are all going to be a function of what's available on them. Again, these are all black and white printers, so they really don't have any uh, any printer any color management properties with them. But this is who can uh, use the printers themselves. The creator and owner obviously can do it. I can manage it because I installed it directly. There's no control through another print server. This becomes the print server. Uh, so that's the way that we can install different methods to install different processes to install network printers. Uh, Active Directory install is the best way to control what goes on on your network by someplace else. And there are uh, maintenance and upgrades, extended printing and the working life of these things, and necessary routine maintenance, online support. We can get that from the manufacturers. These things have firmware. They can do firmware updates. They have memory. You can update the memory if it's insufficient. You, you can actually manage these things from remote locations. Uh, the symbology that you're going to use, and you want to play it, pay attention to the hot surfaces so that you don't burn yourself and to the high voltages because when we talk about minus 600 volts that's that is a lot of voltage minus 100 volts is a lot of voltage when you work inside turn it off wait about 30 minutes never look into the laser beam if you have the opportunity to look into the laser beam don't because it will do permanent eye damage these things are enclosed. You shouldn't ever you shouldn't ever be able to do that because there should be safety locks on it when you take the printer apart that the laser won't actually function. But be very careful when you're working in these things, and it does do that. Use the anti-static bracelet. Have help nearby in case you didn't get it discharged or you do something that you didn't really want to. That's so that somebody can help you. To replace the cartridges, they're basically, they'll have instructions on the machine, take them out, put the new one in. Be sure that you take all the covers off, the, the shipping covers off that you need. The first time, and this was a long time ago, that I ever did one of these guys, I put it in, wouldn't print, wouldn't print, wouldn't print, finally took it off and said, oh yeah, there's a piece of tape over the nozzles, which makes sense to keep them sealed until you actually use it, so... Check to be sure that you've actually allowed either the toner or the ink to come out of these things when you do that. Clean the outside with a damp cloth. Uh, don't use ammonia cleaners. Clean the inside with a dry cloth. Don't use compressed air. Uh, toner, a toner certified vacuum cleaner. The reason you want to use a toner certified because we've got an anesthetic to talk about for cleaning the inside of a computer, and mostly what they say for the inside is to is to use compressed air. But you have an anesthetic vacuum for vacuuming out computers, and now we have a toner certified. And the reason is the toner has a charge on it, and what you don't want to do is create a situation like you have in the Midwest sometimes where these grain silos just blow up from static electricity, what you don't want is create a situation to where, hey, it gets attracted to something, gets into the into the into the motor of the vacuum or creates a situation where you can have an explosive device. An extension of the magnetic brush again because it is it is charged to allow those things. And to clean the hot nozzle and if you look at this thing we have the nozzles on this and in the nozzles next to the nozzles we have the head and you're not supposed to do anything to the head here the nozzles are going to be on the side and they're just going to be little micro holes 
what they recommend is distilled water to do this with, to lob with them. This should only happen if they sit for long periods of time because when you are not using the printhead on these things, it should go to a storage location that actually keeps these things from, uh, for, it keeps the ink from hardening. Printer maintenance kits, you get step-by-step -step instructions and, and things that we want to use from the other from other ones. The consumables, the printer memory, you, you internal hard drives on the big printers. We have internal hard drives. The one up front, the big one, has a, has a hard drive, which has failed at least once. And they have memory. If you have not enough memory, the entire document doesn't print. Very large documents don't print because if you go back to the laser, the entire page gets put in memory before it starts writing. If it says, okay, I'm done, the page is done, but I don't have everything, you may not get the entire page. Extra memory can help performance reduce errors and, print you and have not out of error messages. The screwdrivers, yeah, that makes sense, and the thumb screws, all those things, stuff that kind of makes sense. This is a picture of one, and it has dim, so we have our memory installed here, and we have hard drive bays for the for the hard drives when we do these things and the hard drive to store documents and a lot of them are going to be uh, scanners as well as printers the one up front is a scanner and a printer the hard drive can be used to store that information temporarily or permanently as it goes through print servers the print server is something that allows actually connection to the printer when we install a local printer on a Windows machine, it becomes a print server. Most of the, all of the ones that plug directly into the network are going to have print server software associated with them. What you're going to want to do typically in a network, though, is install it on a Windows computer or a Linux computer so that you can control access to it and not allow everybody to install it whenever they want to. Uh, management tools, Windows print management, we looked at that for a little bit. Troubleshooting, specific problems, interview the user, and we always want to do that. What happened? Can it, is it, when does it happen? How does it happen? And then you can go through the basic, there's three things that can be wrong. The print device itself, which they're normally going to have a self-test, could be the cable or could be the driver. Uh, printer doesn't print the flow chart on the next slide. Here we go. Can you print from an application? If the answer is yes, we're done. Uh, if it's no, can you print from the operating system, from the DOS prompt, for instance? Can you send something directly to the printer? If it's yes, troubleshoot the, troubleshoot the application. If it's no, can you print using... Uh, the control for the printers, if it's yes, check connectivity to the PC and the printers with a basic flow chart, what, you, what that works and what doesn't work. If you can't, then we're going to check the power as it turned on, and then maybe the print device itself has an issue. The thing that you're probably going to have the most is paper jams. When you have a paper jam, don't jerk it out. Take it out slowly. Be sure you've got all the little bits, because if there is a little bit, just that tiny sliver of paper laying in there, it's probably not going to reset itself, or at least ours don't when we do that. Inkjet printers, when you have paper jam, are going to probably have a plate on the back that you can take off to take the paper out. But paper jams, one of the really big issues, when you get a paper jam, you're probably going to get a map that tells you which area, and we'll go up and look at the one, this one up front. It has lots of different areas. It'll tell you where the paper jam is because the paper pads on these things can get pretty extensive. Verify that it's on. The test page is not printing. Troubleshoot until it does print. Yeah, that's really that's really a good thing, right? Troubleshoot the printer until it prints correctly. Okay. Give us a little help here. Does the self-test page work? Look at it for clues. It might give you some clues when you go through that. Not print at all. Take the printer to a certified repair shop. Test page is not printing, troubleshoot the printer, and those, so those sorts of things. But that's to check the print device itself. Is it working? 
And if it is, then we have a couple of other things that it could be. Could be the cable. Uh, if you're if you have a wireless one, you could have a wireless interference. Uh, things happen. Somebody running the microwave, those interfere with wireless. Wireless devices interfere with each other. Uh, things like wireless handsets will run on the same frequency as all these other things, so the 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, so a lot of things can happen with these things, the bio setups. A port tester to test the port. Same printer and cable with a different PC. This is this just go from one to the other. What we want to do is prove the device and prove the cable, and then we'll check the the computer itself. It could be the port. The most likely thing is probably going to be a driver in these things, in in these, or the well the print device itself. They do eventually wear out, although they last. Well, these printers today last an awful long time. Uh, Parts may wear out. You're going to have to do toners and ink cartridges, those sorts of things. Error codes, and we, we found out with Jeremy, Jeremy's machine that error codes really work. His motherboard essentially has a postcard. Yours probably does too, which tells you during post what the exact problems are, if it has problems. Shared printers, uh, print a test page from a local computer. Computer, the default printer selected and online. Uh, some things can be fixed simply by re turning it off, turning it back on, or restarting the uh, the spool. And the last step: delete and reinstall. Print to another shared printer. Verify the hard drive space is available on it. We used to have a lab assistant that when somebody had a printer problem, the first thing that she did was delete all the print jobs, regardless of how many was there. If you have a single print job problem, it's the one that's in the queue, the active job at that time. You can delete it, pause it, move it up and down in priority to make it work a little bit better. And this is, the, to me, one of the last steps. Delete all the print jobs because everybody's got to resend all their print jobs. Start and restop the, the spooler, delete the printer and reinstall it, check for updated drivers, those sorts of things. The typical things that you're going to do in each of these. We have lots of lots of what we can do with these things, not printing. Do I have the correct printer? Does this ever happen to you? Right here we have I have lots of printers that I can print to. I print to one and I walk up to the printer and say, Okay, where is it? Wonder where I actually sent it to. So that can become an issue. Did I send it to the print device that I thought that I sent it to? Print from another application. Is it the application? Did they change the application? Windows has changed Word now to where you actually have to tell it to print like two or three times. You used to just tell it to print and print, and now you tell it to print, and it says, oh, yeah, I found the printer. Now we'll tell it to print again, and maybe it will print, maybe it won't print, but those kinds of things. Port quality, print drivers, application. On the inkjet printers, you can have the cartridges refill, but you should only have them refill three times because as the ink's used, it actually erodes the nozzles. And after three times, their consensus is anyway that that's about all you want because you're going to start getting poor quality print jobs then. Some of them are now putting little chips into the system so that when they're refilled, they still show that they're empty. Though They get refilled toner cartridges up here, and now the toner cartridges that they get, even if you put a brand new one in, says that it's low on toner or out of toner because the manufacturers have done that, try to get you to go get their refill cartridges because they can reset it. Different things are going to happen to you. Poor quality... A lot to cool. The toner cartridge itself, you can get a little bit of extended life out of them if you shake the cartridge because they, it does lay there. It gets dislodged a little bit. When you put it in, you should, should shake it a little bit gently in order to loosen it up because it will kind of cake together. Uh, and as it's running out, you can usually shake it a little bit to extend the life of the toner cartridge. 
the Econo mode uses less toner and it's going to print a little bit lighter, but you're also going to have very readable documents and it's going to make the toner cartridges last a lot longer. The paper quality, look at that. We have a brightness as well as a weight. Be sure that you get the correct paper type for the printer that you're using. Uh, the printer doesn't require routine maintenance. The laser drum might be uh, replacing. If you get a shadow on it, it means that it's not getting cleaned properly completely during the cleaning process as we went back around to take all of the excess off and the excess toner is not being removed. That can be an issue too because you may be able to see other people's documents which you don't want to happen, particularly if you have anything that you don't want always passed down from one to the other. Uh, poor printer quality, background, image drum is worn, ghosted image caused by a problem with the image drum or the cleaning of it. Distorted images by foreign matter or something on the drum. Sometimes you get like a line on the side of the page. That means that the, the toner is not getting removed from it. Inkjet printers, the correct paper, the ink supply is low. Have you refill the cartridge too many times when we do those things? Uh, uh, poor quality, the clean the sponge near the carriage rest, these things again go to and sit on this sponge so that they, the ink doesn't dry out. Change the pattern of transparencies. Transparencies, you, you're probably going to get uh, too much ink on the transparency. <clears throat> Impact printers, the ribbon, if it, if it gets poor, adjust the print head spacing. Check the print head for dirt, those kinds of things. Garble characters, cancel the print jobs in the queue and try printing a different document uh, using a different application. Is the cable secure and in place? Power down and re reset, and again, reset the printer. A lot, of, a lot of things can be fixed simply by resetting it. Low memory part of the page prints. You get a low memory error. You can add to these things. Memory overflow out of memory. In just general documents, you're probably not going to get low memory error, but if you have lots of images, for instance, you may get if you don't have enough memory in the printer. And the reason that happens is the entire document gets sent to the printer before it actually goes from the printer, the printer memory to the, uh, to the image, and then the image goes from there. Wrong print color, some papers designed to print on one side, try flipping it over. And sometimes they really are, they have an up and a down. And they may have an arrow on the side of the paper. If that's the case, the arrow is up, put it in right side up. Laser printer errors, jams, a lot of times happen on Monday morning because the printer sits over the weekend and absorbs moisture. And that kind of moisture can cause you print problems. You may need dry paper to go into the printer. Little things like that can really cause you some real issues. The summary, the languages, the, the popular printer types we talked about, the laser print process kind of went over. It is there. Uh, inkjet printers Shoot ionized ink at the sheet of paper gets boiled out in most cases. Dot matrix impact printers, uh, thermal printers are the primary ones. Local printer and network printers. Network printers typically going to be controlled from someplace else. To install a printer in a Windows machine, typically you're going to have to be an administrator, so your users won't be able to install the printers unless you make them network printers and give them the permission to do that. And we can control who can actually use a printer. Share a printer on the network and, and control who can actually use the printer because we have a number of printers around here and you guys can use the one in the library, right? There's a color or laser around here somewhere. I can't use it either. I don't know where it is. I just know that there is one, but I, I can't use it. I the nurses stuff. I don't know who's got it. Probably, well, they actually do need color. The nurses do need color for lots of things because they're doing body part identification. And shape, shape may not always be appropriate. Page count on the printer, know when the services do on these things. They will go a long time. Ours has got 
I don't know, a million and a half copies on it, so they will last a long time, but it requires a lot of service at this point in the slide. Uh, print management tools and windows. I've had a memory of the job, memory errors as we go through these things. Are there questions? I'm really sorry that the uh, install didn't go right because I know that I can install on the one that's broke right now because I can get to that network. We could have installed this other one, except we can't get to that network. We can get to the print server, and that's what allows me to print from here to that one, to the print server that it actually showed up as a shared printer.